Hello, my name is Caroline, and in this video, I'll give you my top five uses for the Raspberry Pi. This is a countdown list. I will start with number five and work my way all the way down to number one use for a Raspberry Pi. Stay tuned until the end, and I'll even give you a bonus use of the Raspberry Pi. This list is based on my experiences with the Raspberry Pi and not necessarily based on any scientific data. Now, I did a similar video a while back ago where I gave you my top five projects with a Raspberry Pi. It was a popular video for folks looking for Raspberry Pi project ideas. I'll link over to it in the description field below if you wanna check it out. Now, let's get started. Number five. Gaming. Now this category includes retro pie, retro gaming, making your own game, and more. I've seen Raspberry Pis hooked up to arcade cabinets with controllers and an arcade button. If you want to code your own game, check out the book by the Raspberry Pi Foundation called Make Games with Python. I'll link over to a free PDF copy in the description field below. If you're looking for a fun way to get into coding, making a game is a great way to get started. If you just wanna play games, a few months ago, RetroPie announced that they updated their system to support the Raspberry Pi 4. RetroPie turns your Raspberry Pi into a retro gaming machine. You can load your ROMs from Nintendo, Atari, Sega, and more. Now, I don't really talk about RetroPie on my channel because there are some legal copyright concerns when it comes to the games themselves. By the letter of the law, to my non-legal understanding, even if you own a physical copy of that Nintendo game, that still doesn't give you the right to download that ROM and play the same game on your Raspberry Pi. This is not legal advice, and I'll link over to an article about this topic. Number four, Octoprint. If you're not familiar with Octoprint, it allows me to send print jobs, start print jobs, stop print jobs, control and monitor my 3D prints from anywhere on my home network. Previously, I did not think Octoprint was a common use for the Raspberry Pi until one day I noticed on an email from Micro Center that they put in the description field right next to a Raspberry Pi, great for Octoprint. I've noticed a strong correlation between people who use Raspberry Pi and people who are into 3D printing. Before I got my first 3D printer, I would see Raspberry Pi projects that included some sort of 3D printed housing. I would think to myself, wow, that's a huge barrier to doing that project if you don't happen to have a 3D printer. If you haven't seen the video where I assembled my first 3D printer, please check it out. In that video, I spent about six hours, of course it's all compressed on the video, assembling my Anet A8, only to realize at the end that it's not a wireless network printer. Out of the box, you have to save the G code file onto a little micro SD card and then physically push the micro SD card into a slot on your main board on your 3D printer. I think I made a subsequent video where I said, I can do this, meaning I could live without wireless networking on my 3D printer. And then a day later, I realized I can't do this. And I set up Octoprint on my Raspberry Pi. Number three, learn Python programming. Due to the low cost of the Raspberry Pi computers, a lot of people are giving these devices to their kids to learn programming. By default, you have a number of Python code visualizers such as Moo, Thani, and Genie to choose from on your Raspberry Pi. Having coding skills could be the next life skill of the future. Not to mention that it teaches kids how computers and technology really work. Sometimes I meet people who don't have a tech background and a lot of them are under the impression that there's magic going on in these boxes. While my perspective is that the computer reads the code line by line, tries to do what the code tells it to do, no magic. The magic is in the humans. If you want to learn how to code, there's tons of tutorials and videos out there on the raspberrypi.org website and right here on YouTube. Number two, media servers. Before I go on, number two and number one are pretty much tied for the lead, but I have to make a distinction here for the purposes of this video. When I say media servers, I'm talking about Kodi, Plex, and other services where your Raspberry Pi is serving up content. You could even have your Raspberry Pi host your website for you. 
On this channel, I have featured Plex Media Server and I have an entire playlist on configuring Plex and some feature functionality. And number one use for the Raspberry Pi is Magic Mirror. Honestly, I did not realize how popular of a project Magic Mirror was until I saw the Reddit page for Raspberry Pi with the tagline, not just for Magic Mirror and Cody. It seems like a lot of work to buy the right kind of mirror or glass to mount for a traditional Magic Mirror setup. I would also need a miner saw and some hardware that I don't own in order to make the frame. But the other day I was thinking about putting up a calendar display in my home and the tool I would use to display the calendar would be the calendar module on Magic Mirror on Raspberry Pi. So I have done Magic Mirror without the mirror. And now I'd like to give you my honorable mention for uses for the Raspberry Pi. Voice assistants. And I mean Alexa Pi and Google Voice AIY kit. You can turn your Raspberry Pi into an Alexa or a Google Home. You can also turn your Raspberry Pi into an Alexa gadget and connect it to an actual Amazon Echo device via Bluetooth. I've seen projects where folks have made voice activated candy dispensers from a Google AIY voice kit. A link to some videos where I set up Alexa or Google Home on a Raspberry Pi. And that concludes my top five, sorry, top six uses for a Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye now.